Welcome back to Game 5 of KT Rollster versus Invictus Gaming. Who would have thought we'd be here after the way the first two games of the day Ooh. went? Two auto attacks away from 3-0-ing one of the tournament favorites and moving on to a semifinal. That was Invictus Gaming. And now they find themselves in a Game 5, having lost back-to-back -back games, having mm -hmm. thrown in the substitution, and to only have the games go more and more in favor of KT. I mean, what a position to be in, to find yourselves in when you're fighting for that semifinal spot. Absolutely. The series is beginning to get away from them. The first few games, very fast-paced. 0.7 and 1.04 combined kills per minute. Invictus Gaming, the bloodiest team in the tournament. That last game had nine kills in 36 minutes. 0.25 combined kills per minute. It was completely in the favor of KT Rollster, and they have to find that reset switch that they could not find in game four. I think for me, it starts in the draft, and I think the coaches will have seen that during this game of being like, wait, hang on, guys. Why are we drafting these slower comms? Why are we drafting comms with just a single engage? It was just Ning. They went more for like lane focus with the Syndra. Then they went for the Braum bot lane for Bow Line. Like some of these picks to me do not scream. IG can just run at KT 24-7 like they did in game one and game two. It wasn't late game fights. It was early game fights that went really well for them. So I need to see them go back to that kind of style. Kaiser, Braum, no, 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 no. Early game. I agree. Throw it all out, but ultimately it's a best of five and it comes down to one intense moment. And frankly, Invictus Gaming have never been able to seal that deal. They have won a single best of five this entire year. It was the semifinal in summer against JDG. Otherwise, this will be their fifth best of five ever as this iteration of the roster. And in game five, they have never won. And this is what makes it so hard for Invictus Gaming. We just heard Flowers say, the team that wins two games in a row has all the momentum, unless you're IG. Because they won two <laughs> games in a row after being down two out of RNG in the LPL final right. a month ago. So there is a mental block they're going to have to get through on top of being a hit away from 3-0 in KT Rollster. They also have that game five bag. Now, Deficio, it does feel like Invictus Gaming has at least uh, understood or agreed with you on a few of your points in that the shy is coming back in. So they were able to accelerate the pace of the game, get close to that third victory mm -hmm. with the shy in. He does come back in. KT, blue side once again. So yeah. there will be no side swapping. It's all about what can we craft, what can we change yep between you know game four to game five with just a player swap. And I think by bringing the Shy in again and once again on the red side for IG, it gives you that second potential win condition, which is split push. They almost did it five times during the same game, <laughs> the two hits from the Nexus. So that one is still viable. They don't have to then draft for team, but they could actually go back to the game three strategy. But I actually want them to go back to game one and two because those felt cleaner to me than the game three. It just felt that there were so many opportunities yeah. and they didn't have the correct decision making. And bringing the shy in, that means that you're probably not gonna have the hard engage on the top lane and they're mm -hmm. being denied it in the bottom lane. But that's kind of the problem for IG. I'm not sure they get to decide yeah. which one of the styles That's true. because the Rakan is not going to be available and that was the pick that started everything in the first two games. Exactly. KT Rolster gets to decide that. The meta of this best of five that we talked about at the start is what's deciding that. I think Ning's champion pool is being exposed a little bit. If the Camille never gets off the ground, that's a pain. But I do want to see him go back to the Xin Zhao. Because even if they don't have hard engage, they can still force skirmishes early and maybe get that advantage. Reminder, Ning's champion pool is Zach, Xin Zhao, and Camille. Those are the only three champions that he plays effectively. If he's pushed, <laughs> he goes towards the Gragas, and it's yeah. a very different look for him. And Zach is not a champion in most games because he will just get run over in the early game. It really requires a specific setup. That's probably too slow as well in this series for them, but it would bring that hard engage. It might actually be the pick he can go towards in the last game. Yeah, we actually saw it banned, and I agree. You called it out when you saw the ban. You're like, okay, KT Rollster want to slow the game down. That's why they're banning the Zach away. So there's no answer for Invictus Gaming to also play that slower pace, big 5v5 style. When you see that Zach ban drop down, that's when you know that KT are just going to drop a gear and just go into cruise control. So who does IG attack, though, now? Because we talk mm -hmm. about them wanting to go back to accelerating the pace of the game. But KT, it does appear over these last two games, has done a much better job in the early game of just preventing kills, preventing action from that, you know, bloody stat that Jack gave us. And ultimately, KT themselves doesn't need to pick up the kills, just prevent the deaths. And so do you see a weakness that IG can exploit? We saw them go top lane. They got outplayed by Smeb in this last sure. game. They are, you know, finding it a lot more difficult to create those early mm -hmm. skirmishes that a Zin might be successful in. 
I mm. think it's difficult when they had an ergot mid lane in the Tom Kench bottom lane. If they have some ban flexibility, I know it's tricky with banning Alistair, Thresh, and Nocturne. <laughs> my mind just said, See the give, my mind just said <laughs> give Alistair to Mata to get him off the Tom Kench, and then I Woo! immediately thought that was wrong. No, so I, this is why it's a difficult situation to be in, but I would like to see them uh, play through a solo lane and then bring it bottom. Like, I think that's IG's way of getting an advantage. Deficio? I think there is a world where they change the bands and say, you know what? We could actually take a Nocturne for ourselves and use that as our engage yeah. tool. Or there's something where you say, like, the Thresh becomes the pick you go down with in the bottom lane to have more of a lane bully. Now, Frosk, it isn't IG's history to come away with the victory in the fifth game of a best of five. But based on what you've seen today, do you think they can do it here? Unfortunately, no. I feel like KT have figured them out in the draft phase. They recognize that playing the skirmish heavy style isn't working for them. And so they're starting to control it and slow it down. And IG, frankly, just look lost on how to speed it up. Calling the reverse sweep here for KT. I cannot believe it. But it's time to see who comes out on top in this best of five as we send it back to Captain Flowers, Kobe, and Papa Smith. Thank you very much, Dash. The fifth and final chapter of the saga between KT and IG is about to unfold. IG got off to one hell of a strong start, but man, did KT hit back. What a great chapter uh, game three was as well. If you guys are just joining us that now. That was the climactic chapter. Ladies and gentlemen, you may want to review that one and get yourselves up to speed because now we're in a situation where KT Rolster have been able to recover from a devastating opening two games of this series to fight their way completely back to even. But the weird thing is, you know, you notice the Shy is coming back in. Mm. You zoom in on two and a half, almost three games of the Shy was almost a 3-0. That's the thing you must remember. But now you have that extra baggage of, okay, two auto attacks away, Shy did lose a game. And then they went on to lose, and now it's a reverse sweep. The mental baggage has definitely accumulated for the side of IG. But if you find a way to put that to one side, much easier said than done. Yes. With the Shy, they've looked in position to win much more than they've looked in positions like Game 4, which just felt like a strangulation by the side of KT. Yeah, I don't think anyone blames the Shy for that loss either. Everybody now on stage in this Game 5, incredible pressure. And this is just fighting to get to the semifinals. This year is going to be insane. Well, let's see how they go about the draft. For the final time today, we're into picks and bans, and Akali and Nocturne will stay out of Summoner's Rift. KT have been changing up the bans. IG have not, and the analyst desk was talking about this. Double support ban is supreme respect to the side of Mada. So we're waiting to see what the secondary ban on red side will be so far. It seems like Thresh will not be given up under any circumstance. The Alistair is the one that is potential to move away. But once again, the Rakan ban from KT. They want to take that out, prevent the ability of IG to go in and say, hey, we're fighting now. But Invictus Gaming will ban out the Aatrox along with that Rise band out from KT. Solo lane focus coming out as KT will first pick the Urgot. Over Alistair. That is the cost here, is that Urgot is taken and Alistair is up. So IG do engineer a trade and the Shy has already had a win on Scion. That's usually the pick into this Urgot when we do see something like the Aatrox band away. Saya hovered and locked in along with the Alistar, so bottom lane picked up very early here for IG. And again, they're daring KT Rolster to go back to the Kai'Sa, which they highly value early on in this series, where they lost game after game and early skirmishing. That may be where Invictus Gaming want to take it again. Now, in this scenario, something like the Tristana Tom Kench is available, but doesn't seem to be what KT Rolster are focused on. They will actually pick up the Braum, the ability to Block the feathers can be so important into the Zaya. Does lose them some engage, but they'll hold on to their AD carry pick for longer. And gentlemen, I want to just put together one point here. Okay. They haven't taken their AD carry in the first round, and the three champions they have taken have very strong AoE control of space. The Swain ultimate throwing out the never move. Braum and his ability to throw up an unbreakable, and Urgot's amazing tankiness. They are desperate for a damage dealer. And Deft in Game 5 has popped off on Sivir before. I think Sivir and some other hyper carries are definitely on the menu for KT. Well, we'll keep an eye on what they want to do with that one. Oh. Kindred will be the final pick of the first half of the Ooh. draft for IG. 
Kobe's just pointing at the screen. He's at the very Kindred. enthralled. It, this is actually such an interesting matchup now because you're picking Kindred into an Urgot and Swain. Typically, Swain, you want to make use of the passive. You pull Kindred out of her ultimate. Uh, Urgot ultimate as well. Uh, very effective against the Kindred early on in the game, you know, before things like QSS have been bought. Um, and usually the Kindred will want to try and get the ult on someone else. But KT Rolster already have the means to make this difficult for Ning. And the analyst has just spent a lot of time talking about him and his champion pool. But what they have been able to do is go for a comp that rolls through the enemy. Kindred comps are very likely to take over the game early. And then there's a lot of early power for Ning to jungle around. And KT, like we mentioned, are almost telegraphing a hyper carry. So while we've seen a team already today take Kindred and get outscaled, I think they're going super aggressive as KT picking their poison here. The Jinx is definitely a possibility. Hovering around it for a while, but it will be going up against the Scion that was mentioned earlier, as well as that Kindred not having to deal with the Gragas. Scores Gragas did so much in games three and four, they wanted to keep that one away, and Def will once again be on Tristana duty. So what are you safe to pick as your jungle pick into Kindred is an interesting choice for Score. The Gragas finally banned one of his big legacy picks. Olaf is a possibility, as is some more burst damage from Talia. And there we go. Once again, he will use Talia here at Worlds. You have to be very careful. Uh, she can put down the uh, E and allow for more damage onto Kindred, trying to dash over it in those little trades can be very annoying. I look at the kin the sorry the Talia as the one pick here that can kind of rescue some pretty passive farming early game for KT. The Talia holds a lot of power in her kit and can potentially outpath and outplay but if things don't go her way, we know that Alistair, LeBlanc, Kindred can all really make Tilia's life hell. I think th those last two champions Invictus Gaming hovered over were both very viable champions and viable for them to find a victory here, but very different in the way they're going to play a game. I like that they are actually opting to put this power in Rookie's hands, though. Give him the LeBlanc matchup. Try and exert some early control over you, Cal, and effectively roam again. We saw in the last game, how many times did he roam on Syndra? Now that he's a LeBlanc into a possible Urgot or Swain matchup, uh, they can still, oh, they cannot trade it anymore. Actually, the Urgot is locked in. Uh, those roams will be even more effective because the jungler walking around now, Talia, is easily burstable. And on the side of KT, the top lane Swain, we've actually seen the Scion matchup before, just go for something like the Kleptomancy and farm up there. We'll see what the Rune choice is, but this is the climactic moment. This is the fifth game and the potential reverse sweep. And IG, they look to Rookie to be the big playmaker. I think the equation is still pretty similar though, Kobe. This is all about crushing that first 15 minutes and it's getting an unassailable lead from there. And for KT Rolster, it's about staying as far away from that as you can. Last game was very calm all through the mid game. It was one late game fight that exploded and just ended everything in the blink of an eye. And if KT have their way and can make the game happen that way, then that's what they'll play for. But we'll see if IG can manage to get their bearings, find their footing, and finish what they started two games ago, or if the reverse sweep dream will be completed by Korea's number one seed. You can hear the crowd. It's appropriate excitement. It's game number five. The team designed to win Worlds, who built themselves around score and have come back a second year for a shot at the title have fought their way back in this best of five from the slimmest of margins two auto attacks away to even footing here but Invictus Gaming are not finished they have had an outstanding showing here so far Remember that each of these teams throughout regular play in groups only dropped a single game. Invictus Gaming did drop a second one in groups. Rookie went so far fast out of base, he did not actually buy an item. Game oh, five wait, did not purchase here. He's going to have to recall. Someone needs to tell him he did not get hey, item. Rookie. rookie, this is not where you want to be, buddy. He's going probably going back to base anyway. This should mean that Not he's recalling. forced oh. out, and no, he's going to stay with no item, it looks to be. This means that a late invade is just huge value for KT. They know the mid laner can't really respond. Hoofing it back. 
all the way back to his oh, inhibitor wow. hurt turret for a severely delayed lane phase now and already kt rolster just opening up this game with a smile on their faces i want to say though in spite of all this it's smart from ig to say we cannot defend anything we don't have a mid laner let's try to get vertical jungling let's get ourselves a big buff they've got the red buff here but rookie only hits the minion wave now Rookie gets in there, and Yukal did everything he could to shove that wave out as fast as possible, make his opponent miss a couple of creeps worth of EXP. That is just a tragic way to start this fifth and final game for IG. And the counter jungling continues for score. Knowing he has full control of this side of the map, takes away the Wolves. He's going to finish up the Gromp here as well and force Kindred into a top side. Uh, dual jungling here. Do you remember that Ning has no information at all as to where score is? He could have gone any path. He's on a fairly fast farming jungler. So actually just taking the enemy blue is a huge risk. And we know there is in fact a ghost poro, I believe from Smeb on the blue buff. In addition, this is a game where his mid laner did not buy items at the start, had a very delayed lane phase, is slightly behind in experience. So he is going to get the blue, but how long will he stick around? Because this time around, of course, Score finished off all camps. Looks like he is going to try at least for the Gromp. Hasn't cleared away the Poro yet, though. Doesn't know there's anything inside that brush. Thought for a second about the Wolves. Decided against it. Greed is a deadly sin. Didn't want to commit that one today. Gets himself out of town and back towards his own half of the map, which unfortunately only has a couple chickens hanging around towards that base. And while there are no kills for or against the Kindred, her path was very telegraphed, and we already mentioned that we like IG playmaking early, getting leads early, snowballing in this game number five. So even if that's all that's abated, you'll take it if you're KT Rolster. KT Rolster, man. This team that, as you guys said, was built to conquer the highest summits in competitive League of Legends. The Korean super team made their way here, looked so good in groups, looked so dominant, especially in that first round robin. And now they've been taken the full distance by Invictus Gaming. Truly a team that wants to represent their region well, especially with Worlds being in Korea this year, being the number one seed from Korea, that's a lot of weight on your shoulders. And that's their cross to bear in this fifth and final game. The man on your screen right now, the one who bears so much of that weight on his own, Deft, having to jump away. Valon trying to go in and find the engage, but a good job by Deft disengaging. Timing window on the uh, rocket jump out of the headbutt pulverize is very finite, but this is Deft, and he's able to pull that one off there. Do notice that he's gone for a change in rune. He's actually gone fleet footwork for a bit more sustain, doesn't have a Tom Kench this time. Ning still wants to get that snowball going, but. We already mentioned that if you're in one of these hard matchups like Syndra or LeBlanc as Yukal, you're more than willing to give up CCS. Yukal gets himself stunned up here. Ning finds a little bit of damage. You won't get a kill there, but you might as well help your mid laner find a more favorable trade and then get back to the jump. Yeah, a bit of a forced gank because he had no camps uh, spawned at that moment. Wants to make use of his positioning there. A little bit of damage onto Yukal, but yep, he will 75. just rush it off. It is Urgot. Chugging on the Corrupting Potion. Uh, Rookie right now, though, does have the extra charge waiting. We'll see if he can actually get anything out of uh, that small advantage, because Ning now, Camps of Respawn, should return to clearing the jungle. And we should indicate that we would expect this matchup, in, if there was no level one uh, lack of buy from Rookie, to be even more one-sided. He's up about a minion wave for the majority of his last couple of minutes. It would have been more if he was in lane and Ning's pathing didn't have to be so transparent to the enemy. So even though it looks like a significant lead for Rookie, it's much smaller than it could be. It's quite good for a score in the early game, too, to get more levels in your threaded volley as Talia. Um, some of the nerfs were targeted at the scaling on that ability, lowering the cooldown significantly now. He's level five and has been able to sink three into it. Feels much more confident in taking fights. Ning as well, though, on the Kindred, just trying to stack up here. Yeah, Ning's doing a good job staying caught up. He's one camp behind, considering the fact that he had no mid laner and got set kind of in an awkward spot at level one. Only a single stack, which was the uh, Rift Scuttler from the level one spawn on the top side. Since then, a little bit frustrated. I'm sure Score understands that, ending a game with, I believe, three marks earlier in this particular Worlds 2018. 
But the shopping continues. It wasn't clapped up, by the way. It was very respectful from Smeb. He's just gone for a grasp of his own in the top side. He'll be able to control the wave and be very competitive in wave clear. And that's where Sion usually picks up an advantage over especially tank matchups. It's just his sheer amount of push. Yeah, KT Rolster have two sort of midline champions here in Urgot and Swain, which both get extremely tanky as the game goes on, um, but not traditional tanks themselves. Uh, so they will be damage threats. And that is going to be you know, fairly difficult as far as navigating these team fights, and especially we did mention later on uh, the Kindred interactions. So we'll keep an eye on Ning, who's actually gone for a slightly aggressive uh, jump over the back of the Dragon Pit wall to get some vision into the river. Those can be punished from time to time if you happen to walk into the enemy jungler uh, without your Q to get back over. Uh, not going to be the case here, though, and he is able to actually converge on Yukal again. Sweeping through the river, just making sure nobody's got eyes on him. Wants to try to get an angle here, but that Urgot is playing safe enough. The play is not going to happen just yet. We talked about IG wanted to get things rolling, and so far in seven and a half minutes of play, nothing has come up from either side. Urgot really wanted to stop Rookie from freezing, who's fr frozen the wave, as you can see, pretty well. Now in the mid lane. Yukal flashing off to the side, trying to get himself away with a disdain. The chains are coming in. Ning's looking to finish this one off. Yukal taken very low, down to zero, and first bloods over Rookie. Yep, notice how Rookie does not use his ultimate for more burst damage right off the bat. Saves it for the extra chain here to ensure the kill. Does hold him in place long enough. Ning flashing in on the Kindred can provide the extra damage. And in the end, it is still Invictus Game, and it is still Rookie who finds the first blood gold. So, so important with the snowball comp we were mentioning. The scuttle crab fight is probably going to be won by Kindred. We'll find out later. We see the replay here. The fact that the first root arms allows the secondary one to hit. Ning flashes in, and they wanted this earlier. It's bot lane. Bottom lane getting into that 2v2. Zaya Alton comes out. Death pop the heel, giving himself safe. Stun comes down. Jackie Love disengaged on there. Can't recall the feathers in a way that catches Death in a bad spot. Both AD carries taking a beating. Hmm. He did use his ultimate for extra damage in this trade. We may see that punish. That's definitely going to be something you want to keep track of the cooldown as we move forward. Because uh, the heal as well burned from Jackie Love. Also for death, though. Uh, and as well, both the supports with their combat summoners used. Flash is still up on all four members in the bottom lane should the rest of the teams decide they want to focus down there. Ning moving on to blue buff number two, saying, all right, mid laner, you've got an item this time. Going to make sure that we keep you in a good spot as Rookie walks back towards that mid lane, sees a control ward he can try to clear out. As Yukal contemplates whether or not this is a fight that he really wants to get any closer to. All about acceptable losses here for KT. Again, negating mid laner, just a farming top laner. It's all about IG to keep up the pace. And after the first kill, Yukal will keep playing back, keep building into the Phage and thus the Black Cleaver. And we'll see what the next move is from IG. We'll have the onus on them and they're starting up the Drake. All right, have at it then, because the setup has been yes, laid. Sir. Two and a half thousand health left on it, they're going! Now the Braum in some trouble. Mata trying to get himself away. Glacial Fissure gonna be used for the disengage. Mata still in a lot of trouble, taken down. IDP able to find kill number one. TP gonna be channeled here, it does go all the way through. The Shy makes his way into the fight, but it's already Drake plus kill for IG. Yeah, that is definitely gonna be a successful Drake play. The Shy completing the teleport, looking for the follow-up play here, means that he will have to run all the way back to lane. His ultimate will come up fairly soon. Maybe he can use that to get the extra distance. Regardless, it is just gonna be maybe half of a minion wave or a full minion wave that is uh, sent into the turret as payment. A little bit bizarre that he actually completed the teleport with the ult down, because the ult would probably be the extra oomph to get some catches. Seems like he just got the call to complete it. Didn't cancel it. We'll get back to the minion wave, but it does allow a clean Rod of Ages by time to come through from Smep. Smep getting the Rod of Ages up and running. 10 minutes, 45 seconds in. He's just after 20 minutes. That thing will be fully stacked and online in terms of the power that it brings, but KT find themselves down. Over a thousand gold now. Let's go back again to what you guys were talking about with the snowballs, with how IG wants to get ahead early game. Are they on track? If not, 
how much more does this need to go in their favor? What I want to see is less about how many more kills they get quickly. Obviously, 10 would be wonderful, but about how they turn some of the little item advantages they're eking out with the kills into vision control, into areas of the map where KT can't play. We're seeing Ning just accelerate through that and try to solo down the Rift Herald, but any vision they can turn would be big. Yeah, this is a bit cheeky as far as this Rift Herald start. So he did pop his Sweeper. He knows there's no ward inside, but if he steps too close to the entrance, Smeb already coming to check. Smeb's going to see Ning in there. Shelly down to 2,500 HP. The Shy making his way down to the fight. Remember the Scion ulti not available for this one. Ning takes down Shelly, grabs himself the 100 gold. Smeb goes into the ulti. Ning could just jump over the wall to get himself away here. Let's we'll see if they decide to go after this one any further. Over the wall they go. Lambda Spike gonna be used, but there you go. That's how you catch yourself a big one as now we're gonna see Rookie have to jump himself away too. Absolutely beautiful combo right there. I was just waiting on tiptoes to see if they could actually land that never move. As soon as it does, you see no hesitation from Yukao. Immediately, Urgot ultimate, yank the Kindred out of the ultimate, put him into the grinder. That's payment for the Rift Herald. Rookie's gonna go pick it up though. I still maintain, by the way, you can crack an egg by sitting on it. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm still not sure as to why you're wanting to crack the egg if you're the bird. Anyway, we're gonna go right back into the fight here. Score makes his way into top side. Weaver's wall forces a flash out of the shy, and IG back themselves away. Yeah, LeBlanc very well situated to go pick up that Rift Herald eye. Uh, so at least they will retain it. And now he's trying to make a play on top side. Charging in with that Scion ultimate, but it's going to be TP coming in from KT to try to turn this fight around. Smeb is very low on mana. Keep that in mind. The Shy is still going to be on the front line, trying to soak up damage. He knows he's dead. Goes into the passive form and immediately runs for farm. Seems like the side of IG did not respect the teleport that was up on Urgot. Got collapsed and very quickly Rookie said, oh, can we find a one for one? Because definitely one member was going to go down. That was just a little lapse in judgment. We've seen two already, the miss by, and then leaving up that opening for the collapse. Two quick kills for KT Rolster, killing jungler and top laner in quick succession. And now mid lane might be under attack. Ning back in that mid lane. Look at Yukal yet again. He's been putting a lot of effort into trying to get Rookie rolling, and can you blame him? Rookie is the one that you would depend on. If you had to pick one of these five guys to really be the one who carries this series, Rookie would have to be at least near the top. Of now the watch IG, bot side, they are trying to establish control. That's why the assist pings came out of depth. He can't actually walk up to this turret without big threat of dying. Score is here. Oh, coming down as well. Multiple members from IG wanted to make the rotation down here to maybe make something happen. Ning jumps back out, steals away a couple of Krugs for his time. Yukal gets bound up by Rookie as both the mid laners were also thinking about roaming down towards this one. Drake not live for another two minutes, so nothing to fight over in the river just yet as Deft is going to continue pushing up, saying get these things away from my turret as fast as possible. And look at that control. Invictus Gaming know they have a small timing window to look for that play. Because it passes, they immediately reset here. Now, the rewards for pulling off something like that can be huge since they do have the Eye of the Rift Herald, which Rookie was able to recover. However, if they overextend uh, and they try that play as Score and the rest of KT are heading down the lane, that would be a huge throw at this moment and KT could go running off. If you wonder at home why Ning actually stopped DPSing the Rift Scuttler there, it was because of the timing on the Infernal Drake spawn. They don't want to allow them to pick up a counter one and have the vision timeout at the wrong time. So just delaying it to decrease the chance that the Rift Scuttle and the movement speed and vision it provides actually ends up working against them if they lose bot side control with, say, a disconnected back timing or something fairly minor. Gotta love seeing those little optimizations that are always in the player's minds. If On the back burner, if nothing else, as Score moves his way towards the top side, looking for a bigger kind of a play. Goes out the Weaver's Wall. They know the Scion doesn't have Flash this time. The Shy had to use it the last time around. As there goes the Seismic Shove. It's gonna be interrupted by the Ulti. Shy doing a good job so far, but is it gonna be good enough? I do not think so. Demonic Ascension gonna need to go off to find the kill there as the Shy will finally fall. And Smeb looks to get himself away, never move, to try to pull that rampaging zombie away from his teammate. But Shelly's going to be summoned up here. Alan has Death Sense of Trouble. A beautiful flash to stay away. And Shelly claims one turret, but no additional lives. Yeah, great move there from KT Rolster. The counter punch from Invictus Gaming will result in two turrets. Rift Herald definitely used effectively here, because they can also transition these mid and bottom turret takes 
into an Infernal Drake for themselves. So Invictus Gaming, off the back of that, because there's so much time spent by KT Rolster and invested in the top lane, killing off the Scion, they are able to strike back. It's a huge advantage to the side of IP. Yeah. Two turrets and also the Infernal. Rookie was looking to see if Def would take a very proactive path through the a red side jungle. He doesn't. He's still on the prowl, though. They have no idea where Rookie is. And everyone here needs to be safe. Score could just be bursted down. Oh, Rookie is waiting. Score will just farm up the frogs. Not going to go anywhere near that brush just yet. But maybe Def walks a little bit too close. There's still a ward here. You count nearby means Rookie's second thinking this one. Nope, he'll decide to go back. All right, let's take another look at the top lane play here from KT Rolls. So it started off. Uh, the Shy is going to use his ultimate right there. Doesn't want to get pushed back with the uh, Talia Seismic Shove. Then afterwards, he gets off his Grasp auto attack the same time he activates the shield to live longer. But it's not going to be enough. Smeb was able to tank up the turret entire time. I really liked watching the minimap on that play because obviously we saw the kill happen earlier. It was all about Rookie trying to make a counter play and threaten to die bot lane. Then when he realized the pace of that wasn't going to work, just uses his mobility to snap back, put down that Rift Herald. Not many champions can threaten the dive bot lane, but also be mid lane to put down the Rift Herald. And in the end, it ends up being a positive trade overall, if not for more kill credit going to the side of KC. I also do kind of like the heads up play there from the Shy, even though he did die in the end. Um, buying more time by using his uh, unstoppable ultimate and quickly canceling it so he doesn't get pushed back and killed quicker. Every little second that you buy as you're going down allows for more of those objectives to be taken by your team. So part of that was uh, due to the delay. Now back out on the top side. This, these turrets on the outer side all falling in quick succession. Oh, yeah. IG knocking down the whole set. Easy peasy. One, two, three. Easy as KT finally gets themselves on the objective board, taking down their first turret of the game there in the bottom side. We'll see what else they can find as things are coming out towards the top lane from them. Ning back in his jungle, farming up here, grabbing the red buff. Level 11 on this Kindred has the warrior completed, working on the zeal evolution. Next, you can see big items coming up for everybody now. That Swain Rod of Ages almost done stacking. A lot of magic pen on the Talia. Score has the ability to do plenty of damage in these fights. And if you look at the AD carries, it's Storm Razor and working on crit now for both. Those builds will look very similar as this game goes on. And 18 minutes in, guys, we are firmly into the mid game. We're one minute away from when Baron is live. But we're at a very even point. Remember, in the previous game, we had three turret leads to KT, and we wondered how they were going to close from there, they had very strong split pushers. Here they have a LeBlanc who has kill threat but no teleport, and a Scion that takes a lot longer to kill turrets, even though he's invested in a Sheen again. There isn't the same turret pressure, so actually just making map moves, it's not necessarily IG's biggest strength, are going to be slower compared to the pace KT was able to set up. Yeah, KT Rose are being very respectful of the fact that Invictus Gaming have taken full control of the red quadrant of their jungle. Nobody venturing in to get picked by this LeBlanc, by this Kindred that have been waiting through those brush. Top side, they try and answer, but it looks like they're making a full commitment from Invictus Gaming to try and catch Yukau. TP gonna be used from two sides. Smed makes his way up here, throws out the never move defensively. Make sure KT doesn't lose a member for nothing. The reason right. this play comes in, Flowers, is because Yukal had changed over to Exhaust. There's no target to Exhaust, so he couldn't actually get over to change his summoner in that place. They say, okay, let's attack him and try to take him down in the top lane. Teleport comes through, it bails out the play, but you understand why IG invested, but they invested a lot and now they have to back away with no teleport and no ultimate on the Scion. So at least they stuck with the chase to get the teleport also out of Smeb in the end. Again, that turret on top side is very low though, so KT could return fairly quickly uh, to that objective. KT have one minute, 45 seconds before the next Infernal Drake spawns. Their opponents have controlled both Elemental Drakes so far, and you would think that they would at least be considering contesting the next one. Still down one and a half thousand gold, though. We'll see how the map state ends up telling the story there as IG will collect themselves another scuttle crap. That is the fourth stack, actually, importantly for Ning, so gets the extra range, 75 extra range, nothing to sniff at, especially because the threat range here is about 600, right, with things like the Swain ultimate with Score and Yukal, very much mid-range champions. Only Death has long-range threat. Exhaust use, just a cycle here. If you're wondering, Yukal will have his teleport back up. But this is the point KT 
wanted to stabilize for when they went for this draft. They wanted to lose the minimum, farm out, get 10 stack rod of ages, and second items coming, and then the 5v5 becomes extremely execution reliant on the side of IG. It's definitely possible, but when you think about 100 times the two teams run into each other, you definitely give the lead to the side of KT rolls. There's definitely a lot of possibilities for Invictus Gaming, considering the hard engage of Alistar and Scion. Definitely a very beefy front line to work behind. So we'll see if they can utilize that effectively. This entire time, Rookie has been looking for these picks on LeBlanc through the mid game. Hasn't been able to find anybody wandering into a bad spot quite yet. Yukal going very aggressive. Not a lot of armor onto the Shy, so he's gonna get a decent chunk off here, you'll notice. It is Magic Resist he's largely opted into. That's a very good trade for Yukal. Remember, Yukal also has the TP for a Drake fight. No TP available for the Shy. So that is one edge that'll go the way of KT Rolster as they start rotating bodies down towards that neutral objective. Scuttlecraft Vision about to wear out there for IG just as the Drake rears his head. We'll see how the fight plays out. Both sides squaring up, TP coming in. The Shy working his way down here. Hoofman the hard way as Yukal finally gets here, and now it's time to go. Drake down to half HP. KT wants to contest. It's the flank coming in from IG. The Shy wants to show up. Smep's gonna be taken down to half. Beautiful burst from Rook to keep him away. And that means IG's able to find themselves the Drake. Can KT make anything happen here? Or is this IG's fight? Balon's gonna be looking to initiate very, very far forward. And Smep's gonna be in the back line, nearly taken down, but instead gonna be kept alive. Demonic Ascension making sure he stays healthy. Jackie goes into the ultimate. Death down to about half HP. IG. Doing a little bit of work under these KT health bars, but nothing too serious on the either side just yet. They'll both disengage it, but it's still a win for IG so far because they did get that Drake for themselves. Def still trying to get in as many of these little single shots as he can, but both sides are going home. Interesting separation there. You know, Def's ultimate forced out by Rookie playing super aggressively. Then Jackie Love blows his, trying to join the rest of his front line, causing both of these teams to disengage. Again, though, the Dragon goes to Invictus Gaming. Continually the story here throughout this series, and that one, a powerful one. For sure, and it was fascinating to watch this Drake chicken happening, where we saw when the Shy walked up for Scion, you saw the team fight going the way of IG if he got backline access. I'm a little surprised that with so many ults down, Score didn't try to modify the battlefield with a kind of combat use of the Weaver's Wall to either separate fully the Shy or try to interrupt some of the setups from IG. He conserves that, but the moment that we saw the Shy threatening, KT have to pull back, they lose the Infernal, and for the winner, the spoils there for IG. And I really like how IG has played this game so far. We said they need to have a strong mental going into game five, that they need to reset the last two games, and hey, they've come into game five playing a solid early game, playing safe, not doing too many goofy things, giving their opponents freebies. They look like they're making a solid effort here at the end. They're laying the tension on very thick in this series. Could easily go either way at this moment with the setup from the teams on both sides. That looks like a very good, you know, setup from Invictus Gaming with tanks in a very strong position, but we'll have a good fight there from KT to open up an avenue through the mid lane. Let's see if we get a round number two, though, because Baron still on the table, cresting 25 minutes. The fight over Vision around that objective does start to heat up. And remember, in game number four, KT just scaled death to five and a half items, then did a single team fight and took the Nexus. That's still always a win condition for the side of KT Rolster, as long as Deft isn't in, under any direct threat. Also, keep your eyes on Rookie, continually fishing in this game. The one thing LeBlanc usually has to worry about when going for uh, her poke combinations is point and click CC. Now that is not available for KT Rolster. So Rookie can afford to continually look for these damaging combinations. Mata trying to oh. get himself away. Rookie's gonna be taken very low, nearly punished for his sins there as he goes so aggressive, down to 200 HP. Jackie Love finding some free firing time onto the turret. Can't quite get the blade collar down into depth as IG back themselves away. That was uh, very, very precise. A lot of clenching happened there, but no kill actually goes through. Death will continue to walk up. Here's the Weaver's Wall. Score fires off that wall. It's Jackie and the Shy on one side, everybody else on the other, and no play will come of it. 
All right, we did get a full reset. Rookie's gone back to heal, so in the end, just Flash is traded with the support, but they're going in. It's gonna be a big team fight here. The Shy is jumping into the back line, seeing if maybe he can find some damage on the score. He gets himself away for now. The Mata's gonna be the first one killed in the fight overall. Rookie jumps back in. Ooh. Gonna be taken low once more. Lance the Spike goes down. Yukao looking to find somebody if he can. He's trying to get away. The Harpoon won't find him. Shy's still gonna be off to the side, tanking everything up. KT's so low, looking to get themselves out. Death still free firing, still so high HP, but everyone gets out now. Now, except for that one kill onto the KT support. So many defensive flashes. In game five on the world stage, you can tell no one wants to be the one to die first in the team fight. Mata is taken off the table, but KT Roaster then push and take over the Kindred ultimate, thus healing themselves and using it to their advantage. Every flash is on cooldown except for Jackie Love. We watch the fight, Braum is separated in the front. If IG had Rookie at the start, they would have won this fight in the landslide, but Katie wouldn't have walked up as easily. As you say, you take over the little heal that comes through here. They look for the Flash Ultimate while none register. Remember that Smith doesn't have stopwatch, hasn't bought one, and did not start the game with one. So without a Zonius, he can't actually occupy space as well as he will later. And there is that stopwatch he desperately wanted in that fight. So much damage from the AD carries this time around. They're scaling, boys. Everybody was playing with house money in that last team fight. Now, no flashes left except for Jackie Love. Every commitment really going to count in the next team fight. Unless they wait, you know, over five minutes <laughs> for yeah. all those to come back. Which I don't, could happen. It could happen. I don't see that being the case as they are already skirmishing over these control wards to try and establish dominance. Right now, though, Invictus Gaming hard push down mid lane, and this turret is low. IG have the advantage in that their AD carry has an infinity edge. Their opponents does not. Very big difference between those two states as now IG have themselves a four turret to two turret lead and will look to rotate through the bottom side enemy jungle. Nice play by IG, making the sort of macro plays that KT have previously. Considering a turret dive again. They're largely going to be focused on, of course, the turret. Go falls very low, but they might be able to keep it up. Weaver's wall comes out. The Shy separated on it, but that's not the kind of guy you can initiate onto. Turret at 5% HP. Not really a great target to try to defend on, but KT still might try it. Death getting himself back. Probably wants to go grab that Infinity Edge, says this is not a fight we win without it. Oh, Invictus Gaming can also retreat to a Mountain Drake, number four. This one puts even more pressure on that Baron. KT Roaster already pinging over to the Baron, knowing that IG have allocated everyone to the bottom side of the map, and this might force a stop to the reset. And the timer is critical for when that Drake falls, because it means the Elder is the next one spawning by about four seconds. 35 minutes in, that'll be on the board. We'll see how that happens as KT will occupy the Baron area, setting up vision for themselves. IG looking to approach Blue Trinket down in the pit. We'll make sure nothing's going on. Person who orders this is pretty relevant, as so far no one has, ends up being score. People don't want to reveal their position. Rookie looking for a pick. They have so many aggressive control wards on the bottom side. And let's draw attention to an item choice here. by he's gone Infinity Edge onto this Kindred. This is a burst Kindred and a burst LeBlanc. They don't care who's up the front. They want to kill him fast. Ning with the shout out to everyone questioning his champion pool. He is going full DPS Kindred here. I hadn't even seen the ramp up, Papa Smithy, <laughs> until you get hit in the face with the final combination here. But with the pace of this game, that definitely pays off. This Kindred will output tremendous damage. Another pure carry here for the Invictus Gaming team fight. Double, you know, crits will be coming through. It it does mean that he doesn't get the semi-defensive items, um, you know, like the extra health from Black Cleaver or the easy Hex Drinker build or something like that. It's full offense here. The back line will rely on those key abilities like his ultimate. Usually a Kindred player has their hand near the cookie jar. He's right in there. He's caught red-handed, but he'll either get a big handful or he'll die instantly. And that is the duality of going for those risky builds. The, tel the flashes here are so important for KT. You see an item choice like that, and you are deathly afraid of the burst on the side of IG. Speaking of flashes, Kobe said, next fight. There's no flashes available, <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, next fight is going to be potentially with all flashes up again. The cooldowns will be coming up here very soon. 
Rookie over the wall once again, just looking, seeing what he can find. KT maintaining a defensive posture. The Shy wants to go in, look at him, maybe find score. He drifts himself around, but now he has to get back. Gonna lose half HP immediately, score's gonna be taken, not even that low. They get the harpoon down into Maulon, but they won't be able to find enough damage to get the execute. The Shy barely gets himself away, pops the shield to stay safe. Score does a nice wall, keeping Baolan isolated from the rest of the team. He throws him back with a seismic shove and takes down that support. Beautiful wall there from Score to cut off Baolan and ensure that they have the 5v4 advantage now on this push on mid. Jackie Love is very far forward, throws out the feathers, keeping himself safe. Taken down to half HP by two auto attacks from Death, who now has to jump away from Rookie trying to go in here as well. KT has the 5v4 advantage, but health bars at half on some critical members means it might not be as important as it looks. Shy's gonna take some damage. Rookie looks to go in, does get the passive pop. Shy's still gonna be soaking. Roof comes down, damage goes through. Jackie's able to find two Jackie big Love! Kills. Jackie Love just found everybody! And that's gonna be a triple for IG! They're gonna find everyone! It's KT Ace! That is insane! He just runs right up to the front line! Jackie Love comes up huge just when they need it! And and IG, hey, you right said down the front. that nobody wants to be the one flashing forward to make the mistake in game five! Jackie says, I'll oh, flash forward! I will be the hero in this fight! And IG win the fight because of it! No minions means the backdoor bonus kicks in for the turret. Too much armor, and they are going to take the Baron. The game is not over yet. It is not over yet, but was that a cataclysmic fight that IG were able to win? Excellent positioning from Jackie Love, who was questioned by all sides, China, Korea, and around the world. They get the Baron, and IG might be able to stick the landing with a team fight like this. Here he uses his ultimate, so he avoids the last tick there of the stun from Braum passive. Then, Rookie is gonna go in first. You'll see him draw the exhaust cooldown out as they go for the initial prodding uh, check here on the team fight. All right, here's the start of it. Mata goes in, they try and set up the shy. There's the exhaust goes down. It's a reset from Invictus Gaming. And then Jackie Love jumps on score, kills both backline carries, blade caller roots Mata and opens up the space for an Invictus Gaming Game 5 quarterfinal setup. That is the sort of opportunism that costs Jackie Love many times, but in that case, it may win them a close-knit best of five in the fifth game. That blows open the game. First meaningful gold lead, about 7,000. Live by the Jackie, die by the Jackie, as IG are currently living large, 7,000 gold up what looked like a big pick onto the support into a situation that might be KT favored has now quickly turned. If IG win a fight in the KT base, the game is over. The inhibitor turret will fall. Inhibitor now under siege. IG with victory in their eyes. The crowd supporting them. You can hear the chance for IG as the first inhibitor of the game goes down 34 minutes in. Step number one, kick down the door, completed for Invictus Gaming. Mid lane wide open, and a minute and 45 seconds left on the Baron buff to continue the destruction. Really difficult for Score to walk up at all, working his way to as much magic resist as possible. Here's what a Negatron cloak, he can't wait for the Banshee Veil, he needs the magic resist now. Getting some free damage, but only on the Shy. IG knows come more picks, this game could end. Ducal tries to get himself away from some damage. Mata gonna be taken down to about half now as well. Deft wants to try to find the opportunity to shoot somebody, but with no front line, how are you gonna do it? IG continuing to pressure up here. Inhibitor turret number two goes down. That one goes away, courtesy of Ning. IG continuing to push. It's KT trying to hold on, find some sort of anything to grasp on to and keep this base standing. They know that they have to make their fight as Deft is almost down to half HP. Ning continues just finding a couple of cheeky autos onto the inhibitor itself as IG's push will not stop. Smep takes a little bit of damage there. Rookie's gonna lose the clone, has to back away, nearly killed, but nearly's not gonna do it as the minions take down Nexus turret number one. KT holds on, but barely. KT Rollster were able to fend them off in game number three. But IG have returned stronger this time, and it will be with the Elder Dragon buff 
that they return to the base. This is why I pointed it out earlier, why it was so important that last elemental died after 29 minutes. It meant that if you got a lead in the next few, you could catapult it that much further with that big uber buff. And this is the sort of comp that completely abuses a four-stack elder. Hurricane now onto the Kindred, 100% crit on the Kindred. The amount of threat here means you either trust in your first engage or you get killed on the back end of it. If you're not decisive, you will 100% lose to IG's comp. There is no easy point and click, hard CC, any sort of lockdown for the LeBlanc poke. And Rookie has been so annoying, this thorn in the side of KT Rolls are constantly looking for those, but so much credit to that big play from Jackie Love in the critical team fight around mid lane for Invictus Gaming. That was the play of the series, quite honestly. That put this game in IG's hands. From the guy with so much on his shoulders to perform in a huge, game like this means everything to them. Let's see if Jackie and the rest of Invictus Gaming can end this game here. There's an inhibitor and an Exus turret standing in their way, as well as the oh. entirety of KT Rolster. But Smed loses two thirds of his health rather quickly. Score is going to do the same as IG. Look like they're ready to put the final nails in the coffin here. They'll rotate around the mid lane, clear those minions out, and head up towards top side to do this as cleanly and methodically as possible. Just leaving KT with the wreckage of their base. One rotation from Rookie, not even a full all-in, does over half the health of Smeb, who only now gets access to Stasis again with the Zonias. He's gonna need it, but you have to imagine there's gonna have to be some heroic engage by a Brahm of all people to actually get some lockdown onto IG. Elder Dragon for another 45 seconds. You think IG would want to try to fight with it if they could, and for KT, you just want to stay the hell away as long as that buff persists. 30 seconds more to go, and IG is heading straight for the base. All that's left is the top lane inhibitor turret. Shy does get pulled in, but they can just walk him back out. Lord Dominic's just completed, so the Shy finally is taking relevant damage from the Justana. It will poke him out, but he could teleport back in if he wants. A full reset here. Two inhibitors down. Mid lane inhibitor, if you'll notice in the bottom left corner, about a minute left before it respawns. Five and a half items on Death's Tristana. That was the win condition last time around. Can they do it again? KT Rolster, Elder Dragon is gone from their opponents. This could be the final stand. Weaver's wall comes out. The Shy is gonna be separated. Rookie comes over the wall, finds a little bit of damage. Not gonna be a whole lot just yet. Shy taking a whole lot of pain. Down to about one third, but one third will not do it. Yeah, you need to get him to 25%, then you use your Urgot ultimate to try and finish someone off. That was dangerously close to the execution line. Yukal did not use the cooldown though, so they still have it. Rookie takes a little bit of damage. Mata firing off the Glacial Fissure. Shy still gonna be tanking up on the front. Balon goes into ulti mode, also gonna be absorbing a lot of hits. Scores off to the side, but KT don't have their chance to go in. And look at the base. This is where the fruits of the earlier labor from IG start to pay off. Inhibitor in mid lane will be respawning, but KT will also have to defend it. The base stays intact, and KT stays afloat for now. That last point is so important because they get the respawn on the mid lane inhibitor. There won't be two super minion waves walking up. So because of the timing and not losing top inhibitor, there's a potential contest for Baron, but definitely not one they, pre they prepped earlier. So with all those conditional risks, let's see what KT wants to do. KT don't have many options available to them it's time to throw caution to the wind and try and force that fight. IG waiting. It's Baron about to be ready. It's the Shy going in. Score getting himself back. Shy going to be tanking up on the front line. Stunned up. Juggled back. Seismic shove right back into the line. The KT Rolster. They're able to find a massive fear. Shy's going to be taken down. Balon's going to be frontlining now. Shy trying to find the passive damage. Score looks to get himself away. Goes into the stasis. Keeps himself alive for now. Trying to get back. Mata also going to be barely living now. Seismic shove looking for Jackie Love. Can't quite find it. It's Jackie grabbing the kill onto Smith. It's Jackie looking to find the kill to Yukal. It's Jackie who can't quite get him. And KT hobbles away. Rookie wants to chase, but can't find anyone. They have to defend their base, though, so that means Baron does go over to Invictus Gaming. Even though it's a one-for-one -one kill trade, this means they will return with Baron buff. But so many different statesmen at the end of the game, the Baron just dies and accepts its fate and gives itself over to Invictus Gaming. The, it, the turret here next to the Nexus doesn't go down. KT have had just the longest leashes so many times this series to not hang themselves. 
They're still in this one, but IG feels like more often than not, they're eking out an advantage in these 5v5s. KT wanted to snowball that early kill on the Invictus Gaming front line into a team fight victory. You can see Yukao flashing into the rest of the team for the fear, but it's Scion. The Scion passive allowing the Shy to get back up and continue to do his duty even after being killed. The eternal vanguard of Invictus Gaming, making sure the reset couldn't happen, keeping Invictus in a spot where now they continue to hold the reins of this game in their hands. 12,000 gold up, Baron Buff active, mid lane, under siege, KT under pressure. This could be the end of the entire series. It sounds like all of China are backing Invictus Gaming as they are on the precipice of taking down the Korean number one seed. The Shy wants to go forward. Rookie jumps in, finds a little bit of damage. IG gonna be kept back for now. The Weaver's Wall goes in. It's gonna be Jackie Love eating some shots from death, but Score looks to get himself away. Yeah. Ming finds the auto attack and Score is gone. This should be it. Ming's able to grab that kill and that means the fight continues even further forward. See if maybe they can find something else. It's Lamb's response. Fight, giving a Victus Gaming topped off. They're gonna be just fine. Death really gets the away. Rookie's got the chain. KT Roaster has fallen. And Invictus Gaming will do what has not been done since 2014. They will eliminate the Korean first seed and they will move on to the semifinals. They've done it. Invictus Gaming take down one of the tournament favorites. An all-star team here put together. And with big plays from every single member. Every single LPL fan was waiting to see Invictus Gaming in the clutch again and again. Not able to perform and Jackie Love the chief onus of criticism has been on him. He performs on this day. They get to bow to the Busan crowd here. They deserve their victory over the course of a long extended best of five. They were the better team more often than not. They got so close in game number three. Questions about the mental state. Could they reset? Could they still finish it off? All answered here in a critical game five. And now, when you take down one of the tournament favorites, when you take down one of these names that everyone holds in such high regard, you're a Kingslayer. And that means Invictus Gaming have the potential to have a real shot at the crown for themselves. And funnily enough, we may be talking about an old Chinese semifinal by the end of today's broadcast. RNG play in the next series, they will meet IG if they can beat G2. I'd be careful calling favorites in any <laughs> matchup from here on out. If groups wasn't enough for you, let this be a lesson. 2018 is up for grabs. Anyone's game. The dust has settled and the sun has set on KT Rolster. But to break down how Invictus Gaming made that a reality and prevented the reverse sweep, let's head over to the State Farm Analyst Desk. They've done it. Thank you, Captain Flowers, as Invictus Gaming puts their stamp on their quarterfinals. 3-2 victory over KT. Whew. I mean, I I'm still Amazing. a little bit in shock and awe at the fact, just the whole, the roller coaster of this entire series. I'm surprised I actually have a voice. I was screaming throughout this entire <laughs> can game. Confirm. They can confirm, almost broke the desk. We got it back together. And ultimately, what this comes down to is history and redemption for Invictus Gaming. So many times they've been in this situation. They are a super team from the LPL. Yeah. They were never able to pull out in the clutch, and specifically Jackie Love. He has flashed forward and been the downfall of his team in three different occasions in three different clutch series, and this time around, it comes up big. Yeah, it's absolutely a historic moment in the fact that we only have one Korean team that has the chance of being in semifinals, let alone finals, and coming into the day, we gave IG like a puncher's chance mm -hmm. in this series. We're thinking maybe Rookie will go off in a game or two and it's 3-1 or 3-2, right. but to win specifically in this fashion, I mean, to nearly have the 3-0, to not get the last hit on the Nexus, to have the series reverse on them, to have it slow down to a point where KT had made it a quarter of a kill a minute, absolutely their pace, mm -hmm. and then to win game five like that in 
what I feel like was more of a chess match than a death match. Incredible performance by IG. I think IG just managed during game four when they were losing backstage, the entire coaching staff said, wait, if KT wants to play slow, well, let's just do the same. We, we, we team fight against the best teams in the world in the LPL already. We can do that. The Kinder pick was a huge yeah. surprise. Amazing. Out of nowhere. We when... were so ready for the Xin Zhao pick. Oh, yeah. yeah. We were calling for I it. I mean, we were criticizing. Yes, we were game. angry. And we were angry at the like, Kinder. What's going on here? Why are they drafting for late game? They've just shown they can't play that against KT. But then in this game, it's the same kind of style from KT. Low engage, not really looking to force too many things. And IG take full advantage. Ning goes Infinity Edge Kindred. <laughs> full late game carry Kindred. And in these team fights, him and Jackie Love we together go. were Here insane. we go. This is it. That's the flash forward. Flash forward. So, oh, I love it. So many times that has haunted Jackie Love. He has been flamed and destroyed by the Chinese audience for that exact move. And against KT, it pays off. I just, I, I'm dumbstruck. I cannot believe it worked. I cannot believe that they lost two games in a row. And then they go and to reset. game five. And they reset. So many times. I mean, even even game killed. five itself started so poorly. Rookie, Rookie no items, by face items. checking, oh, yeah. Bush missing XP in the first wave. I mean, by all accounts, they're trying to. You saw tilt on the map. They're they're trying to tank the tower instead of going immediately to the Baron. The shy is running in on Cyan and just dying for no reason. You could see the the, the novice greenness just leaking off of yeah. IG in this series. And the history involved in this quarterfinal, the reputation of these teams. This could have been a world final with the quality of oh, these teams, easily. in my opinion. Like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of teams that are fighting for that title, but both of these teams are absolutely in that conversation. The oh, fact a doubt. that it went all the way to five games in this series, and then to have IG do this, just such an amazing moment. I can't believe it either, J-Love. <laughs> I see it on his face, I'm like, I can't believe it either. Yeah. Uh, in his first year, Right. His pro he was supposed to be the prodigy. He's supposed to be baby Uzi. That's what they call him. They say that he's Uzi without the experience. He definitely looks like 2015 Uzi after that performance. I think we just have to also recognize, you know, on both sides, the limits to which both of these teams were pushed. Uh, you know, yeah. the, the fact that, one, we're now saying goodbye to KT Rolster, a tournament oh. favorite here in the quarterfinal. Um, but the idea that there's nothing more that Invictus could have done. I truly yeah. believe that this team left 100% mm -hmm. of their, their hearts and effort on that stage to get the 3-2 victory and move on to the semis. It was just the quarters. <laughs> they were super close to winning that series 4-1. Right. right? Like, <laughs> what they had to do in these games. And, and to, to talk about KT Rolster for a little bit, like they're gutted at this uh, one after heartbreak. finally winning the LCK title for score for nearly being the team that gets the reverse sweep instead of being the team that gets reverse swept. Add, add another chapter to the KT saga. Oh. Just add another chapter yeah. to the KT saga. Whenever it goes up, it crashes down, down very, very quickly. I mean, they're getting closer. There go, my they're getting favorites. closer. They're but, gone. Oh, my goodness. With that, though, we're going to hear from the semifinalist. Shox is standing by with the MasterCard player of the game. Thank you very much, guys. I'm here with Jackie Love after a monumental best of five. First up, congratulations. And secondly, what does it mean to win this crazy best of five after all the hard work you put in with IG this year and make it to the semifinal? Uh, 然后我觉得这一年努力的话，打到这里的话，也就是可以了，就已经今年的话就我已经可以了。This is like the happiest moment of my life. After a year of hard work and dedication, I'm really happy that we made it here, and I'm already feeling satisfied. Yeah, uh, well, you did incredible, Jackie. Lose. There was so much pressure on you, and I feel like you really brought it home for the team in this final game. What gave you the confidence to play the way you did on Zaya, and what does it mean to you to bring your team to the semifinal? We know this is a very big pressure. Then, I want to ask you why you played so well in the last game, and you have so much confidence, and you played such a great performance. 嗯，其实可能就是已经到最后一把了嘛，然后就是也不想留下在这个世界赛，不想留下遗憾。然后打他们的话，我觉得我只该做好自己的事，我只要下路不死的话，就中期如果我自己打得好的话，打团的话，我
Um, I just have to do my business uh, farming, and where I think I'm capable of winning mid, mid game team fights. Mm -hmm. That you did. Uh, now, of course, Jackie Love, I need to ask you about the mental state of the team between the ending of game three and then those two games after and, and game five. What was talked about, and how were you guys making sure that you would be having that you would have enough confidence to close it out after that big mental setback at the end of game three? So, I want to ask you, because the third round, you lost, but you didn't lose. So, you lost. 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 So uh, they won two games in a row at first, and then uh, they feel like in the game three they were like leading at the mo in the most of the time. So uh, they are confident that if they just play their game, play how they play in the first two games, they have confidence to win game five. To keep it calm, and you guys did. Now you already took out KT. Semi-final is up next. Of course, RNG are big favorites versus G2. How much are you looking forward to playing RNG in a rematch of your finals for a spot in the world final? 对，因为你们现在也晋级了，然后你们下一轮对手，呃，现在虽然不知道是谁，但也想问一下，如果再和 RNG 再交在世界赛舞台交次手，你有什么感受？对，呃，我们今年已经输了一年的 RNG 了，但是我想到，如果下次跟他们再交手的话，因为这是世界赛嘛，我们就是会尽最大努力赢他们一次。Uh, we've been losing to RNG for the entire year, so you know, uh, having a rematch uh, in World Final, uh, we'll try their best to win it. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Insane performance from IG. They may be playing R RNG or, or maybe they will play G2. We will see and we'll find out after the break as that next quarterfinal is coming up right after this. I'm still gonna be soaking. Root comes down, damage goes through. Jackie's able to find two Jackie big Love! Kills. Jackie Love just found everybody! And that's gonna be a triple for IG! They're gonna be just fine. Death really gets got it. away. Rookie's got the chain. KT Rolster has fallen. And Invictus Gaming will do what has not been done since 2014. They will eliminate the Korean first seed. And they will move on to the semifinals.